Puppy, 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 puppy. Right here, pop. There's pop, pop. Starting last week, you've been following into this week, you've been following along as we've been dealing with some sick animals on the homestead. And today we have some updates as far as how the animals are doing. Some updates good, some bad. Let's fill you in. Pop, pop. Come on, pop, pop. Poppy is doing much better. We took her to the vet last week and had her checked because she was experiencing runny, runny poos. Lots of it over the night. We knew we, she was getting into some cat food and we thought that was the only problem. However, we learned she had coccidia, a parasite which we talked about in yesterday's video. Who's excited to get her food? Pop. We feed Poppy in her crate. So that her crate becomes a happy place. And I always tell her, crate! Because eventually she'll learn that that means to go in her crate. Pop, pop! Like this guy does. Crate. Come here, Pop. Great. I love that. Okay. <laughs> it looks like Poppy might have licked the lens there. Let's clean that. A little better. After Finding out Poppy had coccidia from our vet who did a fecal, uh, she suggested we give her Albin suspension. This is day like set six maybe out of eight. And as you can see, Poppy very much likes her Albin suspension. The Albin suspension cleared Poppy's uh, symptoms up like in a day. By the next day, uh, we weren't dealing with any more diarrhea. I wasn't coming out in the middle of the night to find any messes in the crate. And believe it or not, we're actually at the point now where I don't have to wake up in the middle of the night to bring her out to pee or poop. She can last from about 11 till six or seven, which is incredible. I don't know if you can tell by my face, but I look like I got a lot more sleep than I did in last week's videos. So it's been nice. When the puppies are eating, a lot of times I'll sit here and I'll play with their ears and scratch their head and play with their food. I don't want any of my dogs to have food aggression, especially with a lot of kids on the farm. So I like them as a young age to get used to people messing with them while they eat. And that way they never have a problem with it because we have had in the past pups that showed signs of food aggression. Yeah, right? I can play with your ears. Bobo's very good with people and kids when he's eating, but he has not liked Poppy near him when he's eating, so we've gotten him, we've been working on that with him. So as far as the puppy update goes, Albin Suspension did a great job. Uh, the worm problem seems to be taken care of, and uh, all things with Poppy are much better, and I'm getting more sleep, so. Two thumbs up for that one, but one thumb is holding the camera, so just trust trust this guy that his buddy is right there with him. That's always cool. Okay, ready? Because I want to get Ladybug bred soon with AI, I'm going to give her a multi-mineral shot. The breeders we got her from have had great results using this. It kind of boosts the heifers and the cows before they get pregnant and right after they get pregnant keeps their mineral levels, levels good. Uh, also a lot of people in the forum have had good results with this too. So let's see how much we give her. 
It has zinc, manganese, selenium, and copper in it. Give her a nice boost before we breed her. I'm doing this first thing this morning because I'm kind of dreading it. I have never given a shot to Ladybug, either in the muscle or under the skin. So I'm a little anxious about this. I'm just gonna get it done. <laughs> late in giving her this multi-min injection. I should have done this four weeks before AI. When I go and pick up my AI stuff today at the vet, I'll ask if that's a problem or should I wait four weeks before I end up AIing her. It's my first time. Chicken, away. Give me a scoop of that barley in there. In here? Scoop. I didn't move him yet. Camera. This is barley from my brother. Was he gonna use it to seed something? <laughs> he was using it to make fuel, wink wink. Oh, I see. <laughs> fuel. Easy there, Cinderella. Let me get the shot. Did he uh, just... <laughs> oh, it's good for chickens. It's dry. <laughs> This barley, my brother gave the bag to us. He was using it to make fuel, like Austin calls it, make fuel. And with all the flooding, pretty much everyone's basement has water in it now, so it got, it's not wet at all, but probably just the basement got damp and he didn't want to use it anymore for fuel making. <laughs> Cheater! Yes, that's what she does. Cheater, that's what that gate's for. I'll get it. The systems are here, we just need Come to on, work back. them. Back. Come in the way you're supposed to. There you go. Oh, oh it's, it's infuriating. Back, back, back. Right here. Not there. Here. Because we've never given her a shot before, we don't know how she's going to react. I put the sidebar up on the stanchion, and we also are going to snap what we already have, actually. This holding rope in the back. Keep Ladybug in place. All right, big moment as cow owners. Nervous, especially because it's like this is all wrong. I won't give it a shot. You probably. <laughs> that was punny. Unintentionally punny. Do you hear me? Give, give it, it a, a shot. shot. Just hitting it. Desensitize that area. Like we do with chickens, right? Alright, you want me to do it? No, I'll do it. I'm just scared. Yeah, of course. It's freaking. So, like right in there? Right down there? I thought it was a little bit. Jungular vertebrae. Right there? Yeah, right there. I'm, I'm like gonna get my hand crushed right there. That's okay. what I'm worried about. Here, you want me to do it? No. Oh, it's easy. Easy, easy, easy. Whoa. Whoa, girl. Whoa, girl. Whoa. Hold on, babe. Keep your hands out of there. Whoa. Okay. Just put it in. There Got we it go. Now. All done, all done. Whoa, whoa, easy, easy. It's not a great setup for giving injections <laughs> in that area. We got it done. Teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to get it done. 
to get in. Camera in one hand, whoosh, in the other. Yeah, that was not good. That was. All right, all right. All right, that was the first time we've done that, and. Uh, all right, it's all right, it's all right. Oh. I'll get a fecal there. You wanted a fecal. Ask and you shall receive. Huh? Be, I don't know. We'll have to review the tape, but. Uh, I'm not sure in the heat of the moment how much I caught, but Ladybug tried to get out of the stanchion, and that rope stopped her every time. It kept her. Now, I can see she had a lot of movement with that. I feel like it would have been much better if the rope was snug right against her so she couldn't keep moving back and forth, or if we had a wooden, like, piece across the back of her, something. So that could be improved for this exact purpose. We thought the stanchion would help with giving shots, and if it weren't for the the neck piece being right in the way, it really would have, but. I mean, it was our first time. That was our? That was our first time giving her a shot. Oh, look, we're like matchy today. Nice. And it was a lot harder to get the needle in than I had expected. So I used a much lighter touch than I probably should have. We have a lot more shots coming up ahead. Right. Uh, with the AI. And, uh, and I, to... I can't do them, so Austin will have to be doing them. He's probably better at doing the shots than I am anyways. Uh, I did want to take a fecal into the vet today when I pick up her stuff for AI. She was very obliging with that, so. She was mad. She was scared. Wow. Wow. Oh, she bent. She bent those. Part of why we wanted a stanchion was for doing stuff like this. And uh, I'm gonna have to make a few little changes and make an update video as to how we can use the stanchion for doing medical stuff because it did not hold her like we needed it to. It's just in a bad spot. That was really scary for her, you know, getting a shot like that. And we didn't do a great job of it. So I'm leaving her in here a little extra long, just making sure she's getting some nice attention. She's back to eating again, just to make her remember like, this isn't a scary place, this is a nice place. And come back when I milk you. <laughs> we won't stick you again, although we will. Although we will. We'll do a better job of it next time. Huh, that wasn't fun. All right, back. Good girl. Good girl. Yeah, that's what you did. That'll teach me, huh? More fecals. I'm going to the vet today to pick up some stuff and I figure while I'm going, I might as well. This is one of my son's chickens. We uh, told you about them not too long ago. They're a special breed of Sussex. And he got them to actually uh, do some breeding with. As you can see, this is the rooster, one of the two. Kay noticed yesterday that he wasn't doing so hot. She came out to do the animals in the evening and she saw he was, uh, just looked like he was limping and funny. There were flies all around him. And he had that weird color in his comb, that purplish color. Normally it's a healthy looking red. So she warned me we might find a dead chicken this morning and we did. And you know, you find dead chickens but it's always a bummer if it's one of your kids' birds. So he doesn't know yet, we haven't told him. We just found out when we came out this morning. Um, chickens die. A lot of times, I mean, of all the animals, chickens are the ones that die the easiest and the most. We said in yesterday's video about worms that uh, chickens are generally more resistant to worms than other livestock, and that is true. Uh, but worms can get your chickens as well. And because of the fact that it's been so wet here this year, and uh, we've been dealing with worms with the other livestock, we're gonna start keeping our eyes peeled to this chicken flock and see if we see the signs of a worm load here. Uh, they are less likely to be killed by worms than like your goats are, but they can affect production of your eggs and they can affect the overall health. 
So we're not sure why he died. I'm gonna go take a quick look around, make sure there's no feathers anywhere, like he didn't get in a fight with a predator or something. Um, but I doubt that, because this is a pretty secure pen. And uh, we'll try to see if we can figure out what happened to him. Uh, we'll use him for another project I have, though, which uh, you'll see later in the week. He won't go to waste. from pretty much day two. We lost one of the little ones. The 13 are doing good. And they have water. They had water last night, but they like to play in it a lot. So by morning, it's empty. You can see the one that hatched a day later than everybody else. This is because he's so much tinier than the rest of them. So even though we lost our son's rooster, for some reason last night, um, He's got some eggs he started brooding. He put about a dozen of his Sussex eggs under some broody hens, which means he'll still be able to grow his Sussex flock. And he'll still have the genes from that one that just died. All right, little ones. Hi. And finally, we wanted to update you on our goats. As you know, the goats, especially Lacey, was looking thin and she was looking anemic. We did the Famacha test where you look, you can look at their lower eye underneath the eyelid or even in their mouth at the color. Worms inside of the goat will eat away at them and draw blood. And essentially what you're seeing when the eyelid goes from red to white is just the loss of blood. They're becoming anemic. That's why that color change happens. Lacey, as we showed you in a video last week, was looking very anemic. That was getting very white. Let's see what the ivermectin and the panicker did. It's been one week since our last Fomacha test. As far as weight goes and size, she looks okay. It'll take a little while to put weight back on her, so we'll keep working on that. Let's take a look at her color here. Come on, hon. Uh, should we put her in the... I guess I'll just do what I always do. Okay, ready? Can you get a good shot? Is there enough light there? As you can see from the color in her under eyelid there, she looks like she's... You wanna do this while you're videotaping? Yeah, why not? She looks much better. Uh, just a week of treatment has already helped bring the color back which means she's losing less blood to worms. Mm. How'd you get, you get it? Yeah, I got one. Yeah. Getting one more? Yeah. Want me to hold her more to the back so she doesn't move around? As you can see, we just took a fecal of Lacey. We're going to check after the treatment, have another fecal done and make sure that we're not dealing with worms who have survived the first treatment and uh, keep breeding. So one of the good things you can do when you're managing worms, check them, treat them, and then check them again to see if what you did actually worked. And that's across the board, whether you're using herbal or chemical wormers. And we have used both over the years. This is what we use this week. We've used this consistently over the past years. This is herbal, just so you know. <laughs> uh, we're not opposed to trying anything in, when fighting worms. As you can see, in one week's time, the chemical wormer definitely has improved Lacey's anemia. Mm -hmm. 
Treating our goats with chemical wormer in one week's time has improved the situation. We're not out of the woods with Lacey, we gotta keep maintaining this, but she's looking better already, and we can keep getting her better and better over the next few weeks uh, with our management and our treatment practices. Next week we're going to be doing a video all about treating for worms. We're gonna talk about herbal wormers, we're gonna talk about chemical wormers, we're gonna talk about how we make the decision on our own homestead uh, as to how and what we use to worm, and we're going to have a special guest who will help maybe answer some of your questions and dispel a few myths about chemical wormers, herbal wormers. So if you have any questions or concerns about either of those, leave them in the comments below and we might be able to answer those questions in next week's video. Don't forget to sign up to the email list so you don't miss that video. YouTube doesn't share all our videos with all our subscribers, but every Friday I send out an email with all that week's videos to everyone on the list, and you won't miss any of them if you're on the email list. We'll see you, well, we'll see you in tomorrow's home study Q&A, and after that we will, we will cover worm treatment. <laughs>